just go ahead and create that hollow. Now this is effective for a goblet, or in this case, if you haven't guessed yet what I'm making. Now you have to stop the lathe and make sure that that ball that you made earlier will fit. And it does. You might want to go a little deeper. And the rim doesn't have to be that thin. It's not like a goblet. Matter of fact, it's probably better. And uh, I'm not giving it away yet, but it's probably better to have a little thicker rim. So this is a great beginner's project because you don't have to get super thin. So I'm going to go ahead down. A little more. And it really would be nice to kind of match that interior curve with the radius of the wall. But... Because I'm going to reverse this and put it on a jam chuck, I want to make sure that the inside here goes in straight so it's easier to mount. So I'm going to use this quarter inch scraper to go in and now I'll just blend that little ridge so what happened there the tip of the tool went to the other side of the center and did one of these because the wood is obviously coming around this way. So take your time, try to find the center. There's that little knit nub down there. And you can use this technique for making boxes and goblets. Yeah, that's not, that's not terrible. Uh-huh. Nice. The top of the bowl is just at the point of the rim. So that's nice. It fits pretty well in there. Yeah, feels good. All right. I'm just going to smooth out this rim. We're going to shape this. We're going to transfer the inside of this to the outside because you want to know where that uh, point is because otherwise you'll make a funnel. So now I'm going to go down line up with my eye and move my thumbnail so it's in line with the rim and I'll come up here and transfer that mark. I now know that that is the bottom and I'll come over. I've shown you this before. I'll make a dark mark here with this margin for the bottom of this cup. And then the handle will be out here. I'll do that in a series of steps too. I don't want to do it now because I still have to form this upper portion, this cup. Again, don't go too thin there. Uh, this is a sharp edge. I generally like to use the long point of the skew to just knock that off. Bring this down some more. Knowing that I have almost a quarter of an inch between here and there. Stop and feel the wall thickness. Again, you're not going for a very thin goblet. By now, if you haven't guessed what this is going to be, <laughs> it's a cup and bowl. Very old school, but eventually I'll have a handle here. I'll put the string through this ball, uh, the ball, and with some coordination and a little practice, any kid from um, 
six to 80 should be able to get it in there. So I'm gonna go ahead now and make some pretty fast peeling cuts and start forming the handle. So I'm going in with the long point here. And I'm going to use the parting tool on an angle, like a shearing cut, to come into that. Give it a little interest. Okay, that looks okay. So now I'm going to clear away a little more. Maybe I should use my half inch skew for a project this size. And if you're getting a lot of vibration like that, you could put, you know, cushion the cone or some other custom um, adapter for your live center. But I think we'll be okay. Yeah, you can see the vibration. That's nice. Now, with a lot of practice, you should be able to get a, a, a beautiful curve with your spindle gouge and not have to do much sanding, but go ahead and do what it takes to get the surface beautiful. Nibble away some of that waste. So there you have it. So I save a lot of the tenons that I part off different projects with. And in this case, I just mounted it in the four jaw chuck for reversing. <laughs> there you go. Now, this is pretty heavy rim. <laughs> it does, it fits real good. So uh, I don't know if this is running true though, because whenever, even though it's four jaw chuck, it might not be totally running true, but it's pretty good. All right, let me just um, see if I can get a good fit. That runs very true. Might have been my lucky day. I probably went too loose then, but I could show you how to fix that too. I think you all know. Well, look at that. Well, folks, it is a crack. That's all right. I'll go ahead and continue anyhow. Now, you think you have a lot of support there. You don't. You could tape it. You could do this. You could do that. I'm gonna try, but it'll probably pop off. Um, I'm gonna do it with the skew chisel because it has probably the least amount of... <laughs> All right. Least amount of force pulling it off. See, part of the problem is that crack is gonna always expand. Okay. Simple solution here is just to bring up the live center for support. At this point, I'm going to add a couple of little V cuts. So the youngster has something, has a little grip. Well, that's one of the worst V cuts I ever did. And do we do three? No, because if you do three, you'll never get the margin right. So we'll leave it at two. Now go for it. Now, if it's too wide, you could you can make your other V. If it's too wide between these two, you can come back and try to buy a little space the other way. That looks okay. Odd things are better than even things. So you got three views. That feels good.
That really brings it to life, doesn't it? Especially this cherry. It's really one of my favorite woods domestically. I like it more than walnut. That's plenty. Okay. So I think I've said it already. This is a cup and ball. I'm going to attach a piece of string here. One's going to go on the bottom here with a glue and maybe a little toothpick. The other, of course, the ball is going to be threaded after I finish it. And um, there you go. It's a great little project.